the space race, there's no doubt that SpaceX is always the leader, being miles ahead of the competition. However, in the distant second place is now not Bezos' Blue Origin, but Rocket Lab, beating Blue Origin out. The reason is very clear. Blue Origin has yet to orbit. Jeff Bezos' rocket went to space, but not orbit. They were planning to launch New Glenn by 2020, but the current schedule is first to launch no earlier than the fourth quarter of 2023. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab has 33 launches under its belt, 30 of which were successful. The Electron rocket can place 150 to 300 kilograms into orbit. The low payload for a sun-synchronous orbit and the higher payload for a low Earth orbit. Well, when we talk about space versus orbit, Elon Musk had this to say. One of the toughest things that are really hard to explain to people is orbit versus space. Getting to space is easy. Getting into orbit is hard. It's a hundred times harder to get to orbit than to get what you'd call, in quotes, space. Which is to say, the Kármán line at 100 kilometers, which is an arbitrary point at which the atmosphere is fairly thin. Neil deGrasse Tyson also said that Blue is not really going to space. They're flying to slightly higher than where planes go. They experience some weightlessness, but that's about it. The difference is pretty obvious, right? And more seriously, Rocket Lab just established a new US foothold with a successful launch. This launch is joining up with Elon Musk's SpaceX in humiliating Blue Origin. So let's find out how in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Rocket Lab is among the most successful aerospace startups of the modern era. SpaceX's first three launches resulted in total rocket failure, while Rocket Lab's first Electron launch functioned perfectly, reached space, and would have made it to orbit if not for a communication failure that caused a mission abort. Rocket Lab compares very favorably with Blue Origin, who have been working for decades, are several orders of magnitude more well-funded, but have yet to launch an orbital vehicle. Unlike Elon Musk's even more prolific rocket company, SpaceX, which builds larger rockets capable of hauling tens of thousands of pounds to orbit, Rocket Lab builds lightweight launch vehicles designed solely to lift small satellites, which are as compact as a loaf of bread or as big as a refrigerator to space. The Electron Orbital Rocket is designed to deliver payloads, specifically small satellites weighing up to 150 kilograms or 330 pounds. Its maximum altitude of up to 500 kilometers is a sun-synchronous orbit, or SSO. The first attempted flight was in 2017, and while it was deemed a failure due to a telemetry malfunction, it did reach space with an altitude of 224 kilometers. Remember, New Shepard got only to an altitude of 100 kilometers. As you go higher in the Earth's atmosphere, the density of air decreases. However, there's not some magic point at which the density just suddenly drops to zero. Even at the orbital altitude of the International Space Station, there is a little bit of air that causes some drag. And then there's space. NASA considers humans that go over 80 kilometers as astronauts, but some would say that the 100 kilometer boundary is the way to go. At an altitude of 100 kilometers, there is enough air that you could get a plane to fly. Of course, with lower air density, you have to go faster to get a lift. At the 100 kilometer mark, the speed required to fly is greater than the speed required to orbit, so you might as well just orbit the planet. So, yes, this new Shepard rocket got into space, just not orbit. But let's get back to Rocket Lab. The company conducted its first liftoff from U.S. soil in January. The mission, nicknamed Virginia is for Launch Lovers, took off from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility on Virginia's northern coast at 6 p.m. Eastern. The launch of the 60-foot or 18.3-meter rocket delivered three small satellites to orbit for the Earth imaging company Hawkeye 360 which uses a network of spacecraft to pinpoint radio frequencies on Earth in support of military and business projects. Though the company has been headquartered in the United States since its inception, all of its prior launches have taken place at a pad near Ahuriri Point, located on the east coast of New Zealand's North Island. 
but Rocket Lab has sought for years to bring some of its launch operations stateside in part so that it can provide services to the US government and military, which make up a lucrative slice of the global launch business customer base. The NASA Wallops Flight Facility on Wallops Island in Virginia's Accomack County is one of the oldest launch sites in the world. The first rocket flight took off from the site in 1945 before the creation of the space agency. More recently, the facility has been home to Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket, which launches cargo resupply missions to the International Space Station. The Electron rocket has an excellent performance record from its New Zealand launch site, so the smooth launch wasn't a surprise. In many ways, the surprise was that it took this long. Company spokesperson Morgan Bailey said that the company had been working on launching from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, or Mars, since 2018. Lots of time was spent developing hardware that would destroy the rocket if it went too far off its planned trajectory. Last minute paperwork being exchanged between NASA and the Federal Aviation Administration regarding the rocket was still causing delays as recently as December. Despite those delays, Rocket Lab has invested heavily in Virginia, setting up a vehicle assembly area and control center in a building near Mars and building a dedicated electron pad in the launch area. Having Mars as a launch option should allow the company to increase the pace of its operations and open it up to customers that, for convenience or security reasons, need to have launches occur within the US. Perhaps more significantly, the company is building its next launch vehicle, the Neutron, in a facility it has constructed just outside the gates to the Mars launch area. Neutron is likely to be key to the company's survival. Rocket Lab's initial pitch was that Electron could provide a rapid turnaround for companies that need small satellites in orbit quickly. It estimates that it can get something into orbit in as little as two weeks after receiving the hardware. But that hasn't been as large a source of business as it might have hoped as many satellite makers are willing to wait to benefit from the economics of ride-sharing on a larger lift vehicle. As a result, the company is now exploring cutting costs by reusing Electron's first stage, which have been designed to be expendable. By contrast, Neutron is intended to have a fully reusable first stage from the start and will carry substantially larger payloads, and it will operate out of Mars as soon as it's ready to launch. The company is already designing a landing area near the existing launch pads. Mars is unlikely to ever develop the level of facilities and activity that are features of a more famous site in Florida, but Rocket Lab's success there is likely to be critical for the site's own success, and it definitely makes for a pretty place to watch a launch. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, my team and I will see you next time.